Well, let's um, turn our thoughts now to Bangladesh, where there has been a ruling concerning uh, from the Supreme Court, which has scrapped most of the quotas on government jobs that have triggered widespread anti-government protests, in which more than 110 people were killed. And um, nationwide curfew, meanwhile, has been extended and the government has declared Sunday and Monday public holidays. Security forces use live rounds, rubber bullets and tear gas against protesters who defied the curfew and blocked roads. Joining me now in the studio is our South Asia regional editor, Anbarasan Enterajan. Um, Enterajan, uh, welcome. Um, let's just talk about the protests first and what they were about. Now, Bangladesh had a system of about a third of government jobs uh, reserved for the families of the veterans who fought in the country's independence war with Pakistan in 1971. The government had earlier abolished the system in 2018 because of student protests at that time. But then a court reinstated this quota system last month. That was the trigger for the latest round of protests. Now, why they are opposing? Because they say the system is discriminatory. There is a huge youth unemployment. And they say the system only benefits the families of those who are linked to Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina or the ruling party. Sheikh Hasina being the, the, ruler, the leader of the ruling party, that's the point. So they say that it is um, in the interests of the existing government to appoint these positions. Now, what happens next, though, because this is really part of a wider context and concerns about the direction the government is taking? Now, the government has to take a policy decision on how to implement this latest Supreme Court ruling. Now, the yeah. Supreme Court has said that 93% will go on merit, which means basically uh, removing the 30% by giving only 5% to the veterans of the war in 1971. But what has happened in the last one week is quite phenomenal, very, very unprecedented uh, protests happening. It is not only students. The students started the protest, and after uh, several students were killed, uh, in clashes with police, that led to people from other walks of life, including political parties, joining these protests. And that's why you see people are on the streets despite a curfew, despite the military being deployed on the streets of the capital, Dhaka. In fact, even today, despite the curfew, there were protests, there were stone-throwing incidents. What it has done, it has raised a big question mark on the legitimacy of the decisions taken by the government in the last one week. Uh, because what the protesters are accusing the government of, you know, using the student wing of the governing party to target them as well as the police. So this is a momentous challenge for Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina at this point, even though the country has been growing economically for the past 10, 15 years. But what the youth have been saying is that that has not translated into jobs for us. Mm. And very briefly, 110 people, we understand, have been killed in the context of this. It is a very dramatic development. It is indeed a dramatic development, but the local media, they are reporting a much higher figure of casualty figures. Yes, thank you very much indeed.